For the fastest times ever been recorded by Jazz. I wouldn't be surprised if that's not in the top five fastest times of all time. Lotta Fries, are you watching? Katie Ledecky, are you watching? Chloe Sutton, are you watching? America, are you watching this? Jazz Carlin, what a standout year she's having after all the trauma of 2012. I don't think she can believe it. And she still looks fresh. Look, she's not even blowing. Well, she's been finished for the last two minutes, so I'm not surprised with that. But that was an incredible swim, Jazz. And to do that off the back of an 800 meter world class time last night, to come back into the pool, she would have been sore, she would have been hurting, her muscles would have been broken, and she's just gone and posted one of the fastest times ever the world has seen. 15.47.26. Look at the margin in the end. 33 seconds thereabouts my calculations are right between first and second Aisha Thornton in third place with uh, time just outside I think everybody was just so shell sure they didn't know what to do in that race but Jazz Carlin absolutely sensational stuff 15 47 26 best time in the world and we are talking by 14 seconds we want to hear from Jazz Carlin don't we she'll have a lot to say I'm sure to Andy Six Smith well, I tell you what, I'm speechless about that, so I don't know how Jazz Carlin is going to get through this. She has the 800 last night, then this. Some of you feel I've actually forgotten how much the 1500 hurts. Um, but yeah, it was great to get involved, and I wanted to um, just get in, a, get in a good, have a good race. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. It's, uh, better than I would have ever expected. So. And all those setbacks that were well documented, were they all worth it for this? Yeah, definitely. Last year was really, really tough. Um, but when you come back and you do best times, I think it makes it all worth it. And even though last year was really hard on me and my family, um, I think they'll be proud in the crowd now. Jazz Carlin, absolutely magnificent as per the fastest woman in the world over 1,500 metres and 800 metres. Well done, Jazz Carlin. Well, if there was any worry that Britain's, British swimming was in any state of, of downfall, then Jazz Carling has just proved that we are on the up and we are swimming fast. I've got Ross Davenport here with me, and he's still in shock. He's even telling me he's sweating from the amount of incredible performances that we're seeing, in particular Jazz Carling. Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about it in a moment, but actually we want to focus on Swim Britain because we've just seen Swim Britain, we've just seen incredible swims in the pool, but there's wider things going on in the community, isn't there, Ross? Yeah, British Gas wants to get everybody involved in Swim Britain. I'm going to enter a team myself. Hopefully you're going to enter a team later on. Um, but I want people to come and join my team. I want people to tweet in. And all you've got to do is when you tweet in, is put, I want to do Swim Britain with Ross Davenport in Coventry on the 31st of August. Put the hashtag Swim Britain. Well, we can find out a little bit more about that in a moment. But here's a VT to explain a bit more about Swim Britain. <laughs> Hi, I'm Steve Parry and I'm here to tell you about British Gas Swim Britain. British Gas, they've got a great aim. They want to get more people swimming regularly by 2015. So in order to take part in Swim Britain, you've got a team challenge. There's four of you. You've all got to swim 1,000 metres. You do 250 metres each in a relay until you've done the 1,000 metres. Swim Britain is going to help you get fitter and healthier and they're even going to give you tips along the way. It's all going to accumulate in 10 events in September at venues across the country. Thank you very much to Steve Parry there, making it a lot clearer. And Ross, do you want to just promote your team once more so we all understand? And I know you're going to try and get me on board as well. Yeah, I've entered a team and I want other people in, in the British public to come and join my team. I have three spaces available. All you have to do is put, I want to do Swim Britain with at Swimmer Ross, hashtag Swim Britain. And I'll draw out 
of the three members that are going to join my team in Coventry on the 31st of August. Now, I'm doing it. Are you going to do it? Well, I don't think I've got any excuses. Is it going on all over the country then? It's going on all over the country, different venues. So I'm entering my team in Coventry on the 31st of August. If you want to find out, then go to the website. It is www.swimbritain.co.uk to find out more information. And what if people don't have enough in their team? Is there a chance they can borrow I, some people? I don't have enough people. That's why I'm opening it up to the rest of the British public to come and join my team. If you haven't got enough members, sign up for it. You've got another couple of months to rope people into it. It's a great cause. It's getting everybody fit and active. It's getting people interested in swimming. And I need team members. So please tweet in that you want to be a part of my team using the hashtag Swim Britain. And we're going to get in for a swim tomorrow just to have a bit of a practice, aren't we, Ross? We're going to see if we can still do it. I'm not swimming <laughs> for a year, so let's see if we can still can, uh, compete at this kind of level. Well, we've just had the medal ceremonies taking place behind us for the 200 metres freestyle and the men's 200 metres breaststroke. And we've got lots of events coming up for you tonight. Um, as you can see there, we've already seen the, the medal ceremonies for the women's 200 metres freestyle, and that's... Ellie Faulkner then. She pulled out of the 1500, but she was obviously focusing on the 200 cross, wasn't she? Yeah, she pulled out of the 1500, but she's won the 200 metres. She knows she can't keep up with the, the likes of Jazz Carlin. That was a truly incredible swim from Jazz. And uh, they're both going to be on the team going to Barcelona. And the big breaststroke boys there, Michael Jameson, where he, where he belongs, on top of the podium. Certainly, but he was pushed all the way by uh, Andrew Willis. They train day in, day out at the University of Bath. These guys have got their, the world at their feet. They can go on to bigger and better things. Michael Jameson won a silver medal last year, but that's only, that's only the start of things to come. He can go on to greatness. Great stuff. Well, we're going swiftly on to the semi-final of the women's 100 metres butterfly. Over to you, Bob. Let me give you the uh, two to seven as it is in this one. Ellen Thomas of Guildford City in two. Raquel Matos of East Lothian in three. Rachel Kelly. Fastest qualifier into this semi in lane four. Fiona Donnelly of Nova Centurion in five. Brianna Close of City of Manchester Aquatics in six. And Rachel Sharples of East Lothian Swim Club in lane number seven. So it's about a minute or so they're going to take to go from one wall back to the same wall again. Uh, Rachel Kelly has the best time, but the only swimmer who's been sub 60 thus far in all the swimmers are here and not surprisingly she leads at the turn in 27.36 Rachel Matos in second place Fiona Donnelly and Rachel Sharples absolutely together at the turn but Rachel Kelly will be looking for a time a little bit quicker than her qualifying time which is 59.51 can she get in and around the 59? Well, she's won this race very comfortably from Fiona Dolly and Raquel Matos. Big margin between one and two in a 100 race. That means it should be pretty quick. It's 58.60. That is very quick by her standards. That's a very big PB. Three quarters of a second faster than she has ever been before there. Rachel Kelly from Loughborough University. Second place going to Fiona Donnelly and third to Ellen Thomas. So, yeah, that margin did indicate that there was a very big margin between first and second. That will be good enough, of course, to give her possibly lane four, possibly lane five in the final to come tomorrow. Big one. Look at that. It's all of what? Four or five meters in the end when they came into the wall. And uh, this is what she did. Only one swimmer in the end going sub 60. That's Rachel Kelly, 58.60. Fiona Donnelly, 60.96. Ellen Thomas in third in 110.30. Best time in the world this year. Alicia Coots of Australia. That's a decent mark, 58.60, and Rachel Kelly hopefully will go faster still. That's a big chunk she's taken off her personal best today. As we move on to semi-final number two of the 100 Butterfly, and we have seven lanes taken up for this one. Fiona Hardy in one for four. I think we'll get uh, the lineup in just a moment. To Eleanor Sheridan, uh, but the fastest qualifier, of course, is Gemma Lowe in lane number four from Swansea University. Missed out on that time in the 200 butterfly last night. Will feel very upset by that because that was really her passage into the World Championships. But 
she responded very well this morning uh, with the season's best time, 58.64. This uh, Tilly Gray of Loughborough, and uh, her personal best is 59.38. Here comes the uh, one to seven as it is. Fiona Hardy, Ellen the Sheridan, Tilly Gray, Gemma Lowe, Georgia Barton, Libby Mitchell, and Grace Vertigan to Plymouth in seven. So, Gemma Lowe, who has been 57.43, if she did that here, or beat that, they would give her the third fastest time in the world this year, uh, above Sarah Showstrom. Sarah Showstrom was not quite in the form that she was in previous years, because that's quite slow by her standards, but uh, if Gemma Lowe can replicate what she has done in the past in this one, she'll be up there in the top three, Ross. Yeah, a lot of the world have not shown their hands fully yet, especially uh, Sarah Showstrom from Sweden. But Gemma, Gemma Lowe didn't have a very good swim last night in the 200 metres uh, butterfly, but she looks like she's on cracking form here on the 100 metres. She must have been inspired by Jazz Carlin's swim. They swim at the same uh, club down in Swansea, and she's now turning first in 26.99 to take the first 50 metres. Big margin already opened up over Tilly Gray in lane number three. Third place is George Barton, but this... So often when you have a class swimmer, class athlete like Gemma Lowe is a swimmer against the clock and she is making up for lost time here. They're starting to come back to her or trying to come back to her, but they're not achieving much in terms of eating into a big distance. Now Gemma Lowe, stop the clock at a reasonable time. Give us a good time to get enthused about. 58.18 is not bad at all. Season's best for her and hopefully there is more to come in the final. Georgia Barton 10033 is a new personal best. Third place to Tilly Gray, 101-21. She has been sub one minute, so that's a little bit shy of her best. And fourth going to Eleanor, no, not Eleanor Sheridan. They've given us the result with uh, Gemma in fourth place, but we know it was Eleanor Sheridan in fourth place, Georgia Barton in second, and Tilly Gray in third. And this is how she finished it off. Extremely commanding race from Gemma Lowe. Disappointed last night in the 200 metres fly, but she's put her head down now, last five, really driving to the wall, stopped the clock at 58.18, which is underneath the consideration time for the World Championships. So as long as she can do that time in the final tomorrow night, she'll be in consideration to go. We saw uh, in two nights ago that she actually did the qualification time in the 200 metres fly, but she didn't do it in the final when it mattered. So fingers crossed for Gemma that she can back that up tomorrow night and go under that qualification time again. Coming up next, we have the men's 200 metres individual medley and two semi-finals, Kate. Yes, you're right there, Bob. Lots to look forward to. We've also got the finals of the 50 metres breaststroke, the 50 metres backstroke, the 50 metres butterfly, and also we've got the multi-classification races for the 200 metres individual medley and 150 metres individual medley. So you do not want to go anywhere. But let's have a look at some of the replays of the, the 100 metres butterfly to see how those girls did qualify into the final. Because it looked like Gemma Lowe really did have a big job to do after the 200 metres 200 metres fly. She had a lot of work. To do to ensure that she can make that team and assuming she can do that time in the finals tomorrow she will be on that team so let's have a look back at some of those replays to see the qualifiers uh, particularly strong swim she was really out fast in that first length and no one could get close to her so I think that could be could be a top swim the butterfly stroke is all about keeping smooth keeping it long and I think we have Rachel Kelly there who was in the first heat and she also was out on their own so I think Rachel and Rachel Kelly and Gemma Lowe will be battling out in the final tonight because with the loss of Ellen Gandhi um, and um, Jessica Dickens it really has changed the, the way the way that butterfly swimming is looking at the moment <clears throat> Semi-final number one of the men's 200 metres individual medley. Second fastest qualifier from the heat, Xavier Mohamed of City of Cardiff going in lane four. Another local lad, Lewis Coleman in three. Joe Roebuck, we expect him to go considerably quicker than he did in the heats. I think again, another swimmer who wasn't really showing his hand. And also in this race, we have a man who's more comfortable over 400 IM than 200 IM, Tom Hatfield from Cardiff in lane one. Yeah, you can see now Joe Roebuck really taking this out on the first 50 metres, the fly leg, turning onto his back. Look at that great underwater, has gone about 13, 14 metres underwater, and he already is four metres up on the rest of the field. Yeah, as we predicted, the heat swim really was no indication of what kind of form he's in. And of course, he had a disappointment last night in the 
race that he was running with uh, Roberto Pavoni. Didn't make it in the 200 butterfly, but he's definitely going to make it in the 200 meters individual medley with absolutely no, and he's easing up going into the wall. No problem there at all as he turns in 56.32. Second place to Xavier Mohammed and third is Thomas Lytton of Kelly College. Now, what does Joe Roebuck do? Does he, um, was he just going for a hundred time there? Or because it all of a sudden Xavier Mohammed's coming back to him very quickly. The backstroke is not Joe's main stroke, but he has been putting a lot of work into his backstroke. But I think he'd just be stroking this out now. He knows that the eight guys are going to make this uh, the final tomorrow night. And as long as he beats uh, the majority of this heat, he'll be in that final tomorrow night. And as, as it is, he turns still in first place in 131.68. So it's Roebuck from Mohammed and Thomas Litton, a third for Kelly College. Fourth is Tristan Slater and uh, Tom Hatfield is back in sixth. But uh, Joe Roebuck will want to win this. Sammy Mohammed wants to win it as well, as does Tom Litton. But it is just, I think, going to be Roba, although Xavier Mohammed's going to take him right into the wall, and he gets it. 201-11 for Xavier Mohammed. Second place to Joe Roebuck, and third to Tom Litton. So Xavier Mohammed uh, qualifying time, 203-62, improved on that massively today. But a comfortable qualification for both Xavier Mohammed and for Joe Roebuck and Tom Litton. And having to wait to see whether he makes it through is Lewis Coleman. Good spin from Joe Roebuck. I know he came second in that race, but he looked like he switched off around about 75 metres to go. Halfway down that breaststroke, uh, backstroke leg, he really took his foot off the gas and just cruised in. It was probably one of the easiest 201 IM swims I've seen. Uh, Mohammed in lane one from... Uh, in, came first from Cardiff, also going 101, just pipped him by one tenth of a second. This is where everybody was placed in the end, Xavier Mohamed, Joe Roebuck, Tom Litton and Lewis Coleman, the one, two, three, four, they would hope to be in the final tomorrow night. Semi-final number two, waiting in the wings. This is where we want to see what uh, work Dan Wallace has been doing in America with the Gators. Warren de Bath's club, he is the fastest qualifier. Roberto Pavoni, again, as we mentioned, the disappointment of the 200 butterfly pap still fresh in his mind. We've got Yian Lloyd in lane seven coming up. He's just fresh out of his 200 meters freestyle final, so be interested to see how he's recovered and ready to go in this, this semi final. So the 1 to 8, Fabian Whitbread of Warrender, to Fraser Minikan of Millfield, Mark Zaranek of Carnegie, Dan Wallace going lane 4 for Warrender, Roberto Pavoni, Lapra 5, Max Litchfield of Doncaster 6, Yian Lloyd, as mentioned by Ross, in 7, and Matthew Parks of Edinburgh in lane 8. Semi final number two of the men's 200 meters individual medley. Butterfly doesn't always sort them out. It's the breaststroke, the third leg that very much does. Certainly it does. It looks like Yain Lloyd's had a fantastic start out there in lane seven, coming to 35 meters gone. He's also been he's in close company by swimmers in lane five, four, three. So it's close on the first length. I've just finished the butterfly leg. I thought you were going to take off for a moment. It said 5 4 3. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to explode. Matched Litchfield at the turn. 27.97. I think the old uh, timing system's gone a little bit haywire, so we'll look with our eyes and try and work out who's doing what. Roberto Pavoni and Dan Wallace. And uh, Yain Lloyd having a good swim in lane number seven with the. Uh, Front ranked at the moment on the backstroke is Roberto Pavoni. So at the halfway stage, it will be he who leads. Second place will be Dan Wallace. And uh, these two are going head to head. But uh, on the far side, keep an eye on Yian Lloyd because he's got the freestyle leg to come and that will be his strongest. It's these three guys with 35 meters to go on this breaststroke leg. It is Pav that's stroking it out in lane five, extending his lead a little bit. Yian's just lurking in the background, third position. So last 50 turn. 
And uh, Dan Willis and Roberta Pavoni side by side. Who's got the better freestyle? Yeah, and Lloyd's not actually making any impression, but lanes four and five. Head to head, side by side, Yain Lloyd starting now to make his move. But Dan Wallace and Roberto Bavoni absolutely locked together. Is the American based swimmer or the Loughborough based swimmer going to get there first? The American based swimmer, Dan Wallace, is going to get there first. Stopping the clock at 159.80, just two one hundred separating Wallace and Pavoni. Qualifying times 159.64, so they're closing in on that. Third place going to Yain Lloyd. And fourth was Max Litchfield. So Dan Wallace, 159.8. That's about five seconds quicker than he went this morning. Yeah, very controlled swim from Dan Wallace there. Looks like uh, Roberto Boni was taking it easy, similar to Ro Joe Robot, but obviously a lot quicker. Those two guys were just outside the qualification time for the World Championship, and it looks like they've got so much more to give tomorrow night in the final. Yain Lloyd coming third. 2000.34. So again, he's just around about 0.7 outside of the qualification time. Wallace Pavoni, Lloyd Litchfield, Zaranek, Whitbread, Minican, and Parks will return for the final tomorrow. The 200 meters individual medley there. We've got the highlights to show you in just a moment, but I do want to just plug our Twitter feed. You can hashtag BGSC13 and send through some of our messages. There's been lots of support for Jazz Carling. I think we've got Jolie Knight saying a British record for Jazz Carling. And all of these tweets we want to read out. We want to make sure that you're getting your time on the fast lane. Um, and also got coming up, we have a couple of presentations that we might have time to go to. We'll have the men's at 200 meters at freestyle. We'll have the 1500 meters. So lots of lots to look forward to. But let's have a look at some of the highlights from that 200 meters individual medley. I actually really think the 200 meters medley is the, the hardest event to do because you have to be able to do every stroke to absolute perfection. And as you can see there, there was a real mix across all of the lanes of the 200 meters individual medley. Who, who stood out for you, Ross? Joe Robo looked like it was very, very comfortable. 201. So did uh, Mohammed Aaron. He was also very comfortable finishing first in that heat. I think the semi, second semi final was where the, the guys are to beat are. Dan Wallace just stroked it out, won that heat. Roberto Pavoni looked very, very easy. And never ever write out Yain Lloyd, who finished third in that heat. Well, we can look forward to that final tomorrow. We've also got the women's 200 individual medley semi final coming up very soon. Now, we've got the medal presentation going on behind us for the 200 meters freestyle. Let's have a look who is on the top of those podiums. Um, in the men's, we had Robbie Renwick at the top and Yian Lloyd, who's literally just got out the pool to receive his medal there. He's just putting his t shirt on. He's absolutely dripping with. Uh, dripping wet and he's on the third place second place on the podium on that 200 meters freestyle but we can see here Robbie Rennick cracking swim saying he's not fully tapered 146.6 is a world-class time just outside his lifetime best so if he's not fully ready to go we can expect some big things from him in the, in the summer in the world championship James Guy third position very talented individual coming up through the ranks um, hopefully he's now qualified for the, for the relay. We'll have to wait and see on Monday for the selection policy. Do you think Robbie Renwick has been the stand-up performance so far? In terms of the men's side, he's been one of them. Um, we've seen Chris walker Heaven as well. He's been very good. So, yeah, Robbie's sol solid. He always is very solid. And, you know, he's, he's, got, he's got a lot to come. Well, we've just seen the podium performers there, but Ross actually met with um, Mark Perry a little bit earlier today to find out a bit more about the development programme going on. Let's see what he found out. Good evening, I'm here with Mark Perry, national coach and in charge of the Podium Potential programme. Good evening, Mark. We've, we've seen over the last two and a half sessions some great swims from the, the Podium Potential guys. How have they been getting on? Yeah, really well. We've had uh, a number of great swims, but not everyone's here because obviously we're leaving a week for the European Juniors. Um, but, but the guys that have been here are, are, have done some outstanding swims, so pretty excited. And, and coming off a disappointing Olympic Games last year, what is in place now for the juniors to, to progress onto the senior team and, and winning medals for, for Great Britain? Um, we, we've, we've had a complete overhaul of the, of the way that we look at our junior swimmers, really, and the way that we try and nurture our talent, which there's no question we've got a lot of talented athletes in the country. Um, and we, we've had a complete rethink about how we do that. 
um, and we've called it the AIMS program. And in, in the past, uh, we selected purely off times. Now a time is, is the mechanism that gets you noticed, if you like. So you do a performance and that gets you on a list of interest. We then go out and interview all those swimmers, look at their daily training environment, look at their physical suitability for the event, look at their lifestyle. And we, we, we've come up with a mechanism where we can score them on a whole range of things. And we can then rank athletes like for like. We've seen some fantastic performances already. You've mentioned on the, on the talents of the, the individuals. We're going out as a, as a nation to Poland for the European Juniors. Just a, a, a kind of a medal target in, in target for you? Um, I'm always a bit cagey about medal targets, but uh, we, we have got a history of success. This is my third year in charge, and we've finished in the top four in the medal table both times. I would like to think that we can remain in the top, in the top four. But I would put the proviso that because we've had some of our juniors, particularly, you know, Matthew Johnson, James Guy swim amazingly well here. If they are included on the world uh, team, senior team, then that will cost us, you know, a, a few medals. So, uh, but I would like to think we can still maintain our position in the top four. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark, for your time. And a moment not to be missed there, Jazz Carling, who we just saw receive her medal for the 1500 metres, breaking the British record as well. Very pleased to be receiving that gold medal from, from James Hickman, by the looks of it, handing out the medals there. So very proud moment for her. And the semi-finals are flowing through very quickly. And we have the Virgin Medley coming up now. On to the women's 200 metres individual medley semi-final number one, containing the likes of the Sophies, Sophie Smith and Sophie Allen in the centre and Amy Wilmot in six. Sophie Smith, the fastest of the eight from the heats anyway, 2.12.31 is her personal best. She was about ooh, two and a half seconds outside that in the heats this morning. Stacey Tad, better known, of course, as a breaststroker, going in lane three. Sophie Allen, who seems to be doing an awful lot of events this week. She's going in lane five for University of Bath. And Amy Wilmot, who's our 400 IM from the Olympics last year, going for half that distance here. Yeah, that's right. Sophie Allen represented Great Britain at the Olympic Games on this event. So she's going to be very, very strong. I've been so impressed with Sophie Smith this week already. She's done just about every other event going. She's already done the 200 metres freestyle tonight. So keep an eye out for her. Not probably this year, but maybe. But looking forward to the next three years. She's certainly one to watch. Let's see who uh, is taking control of the backstroke leg of the 200 metres individual medley. It looks like being Sophie Allen just ahead of Sophie Smith. The white cap in five, the blue cap in four, and not too far away either is Amy Wilmot in six at the halfway stage time-wise. 102.64 for Sophie Allen, leading Sophie Smith by about three-tenths of a second. Third place is Amy Wilmot and Georgia Barton from City of Manchester in fourth. But, of course, this is the leg that sorts them out. Expect Sophie Allen to fly on this leg. She is the winner of the 100 metres breaststroker, going to be in the first British breaststroker to go under 108 for such a long time. The previous uh, people to go under is Kirsty Belfort and Kate Haywood, but not for a good four or five years. So this is Sophie Allen ra uh, race now. She's got 50 metres to go and she's extended that lead on the breaststroke leg. She is on paper, the second fastest in the field, but I think that personal best of 2.12.31 is going to come down considerably, if not today, then in the final tomorrow. 1.41.08 at the turn, Sophie Allen, Sophie Smith in second, Amy Wilmot in third. Sophie Allen now has just switched all the afterburners off. She's just cruising along, so 15 metres to go, letting the rest of the field catch her up. But even though she's backed off completely, I don't think anybody else is going to catch her. Taking the mickey is what I call that, Sophie Allen. Looking how easy she's making it look. And she stops the clock at 2.13.72. Uh, it's not even the season's best for us. We know there's an awful lot more left in the tank. We presume there is. Anyway, Sophie Smith in second place. Amy Wilmot, 2.15.16. None of them particularly quick by their standards, but I think they are keeping all that in reserve for tomorrow night when there will be a real shootout. 
So if Alan was only at half a second outside the World Championship qualification time, and look how easy this is. She's going to the last five meters. She even glides in towards the end. That is, as you say, Bob, taking the Mickey on the certainly the last 25 meters. So plenty more to come from Sophie Allen tomorrow night, and that'll be an exciting final to watch. Big hitters, though, apart from her, coming in uh, semi-final number two in just a moment. Sophie Allen from Sophie Smith, Amy Wall, and Stacey Tad would all hope that they will be in the final. Rachel Solway will have to wait and see. Semi-final number two of the women's 200 meters individual medley. Here comes your one to eight, and there will be some very familiar names to you here. Hannah Miley, who is the British record holder in lane number three. Siobhan Marie O'Connor, ranked five in the world off her heat swim, would you believe, in lane number four. Yes, yeah, she's, she's just, from last year, she really has knuckled down, worked hard, and she's still such a young girl. She's such a sweet and innocent girl. She's, you know, a delight to be around, and she's now taking her swimming extremely seriously, and you can tell by the results that she's posting. And we'll get a look at that. There she is. Siobhan Marie O'Connor made her world championship debut for Great Britain at the age of 15. Yeah, and even at 15, she wasn't faced by the rest of the girls. She made the semi finals in Shanghai in 2011, and she just went for it. She's not faced one bit. And she came out of the pool smiling, laughing, bubbling. It was such a, a delight to see that somebody's just enjoying themselves at the highest stage. I think Hannah probably knows her reign as British champion may well be coming to an end here because she is a 400 specialist. Um, she hasn't got time to make up the distance on a 200, really, has she? Yeah, I think between Siobhan, Rio Connor and Sophie Allen, I think you know, Hannah is certainly in for some tough competition. But she is the reigning British champion, so she won't give that title up very easy. Now, the intriguing thing for me is to see just how fast Siobhan Marie O'Connor is going to go if she's done a 2.10.53, which is three seconds inside the qualifying time for the Europe, for the Worlds in the heats. What can she do? What is she capable of doing in the semi-finals? And, of course, when she progresses, as we hope she will, without a DQ through the final, are we looking at a 209 low or are we looking at a 208 high? What are we looking at off the first 50? 2766 on the butterfly leg. Danielle Lowe in second place, Eleanor Sheridan third, and fourth is Ellis Jackson. Hannah Miley, as expected, at the back of the field, pretty much close to it in seventh place. You can see there Hannah Miley in lane number three and Siobhan Marie O'Connor in lane four. You can see already there's about five, six meters. Hannah can knock catch this up against the likes of Shari, uh, Siobhan Marie O'Connor. So unless Hannah's taken this easy, because she has had the 200 metres uh, freestyle earlier on this evening, but the minute it is Siobhan Marie O'Connor turning first in one minute, 0.93, closely followed by Danielle Lowe. Now, she doesn't have to go for broke in the semi-finals because she's already got herself into position eight, but I don't think she's going to hold back too much here. Siobhan Marie O'Connor, 1 0 at the turn. That was uh, nearly a second clear of Danielle Lowe. The breaststroke is the breaker, though, and she doesn't seem to have any problem, of course. She has done some very good times on the 200 breaststroke as Siobhan, so the breaststroke doesn't phase her either. No, she qualified for the Olympic Games last year in the 100 metres breaststroke. Hannah has made some inroads to her, but it's too far for her to catch down this third 50. Going into the final 50, Siobhan is turned first in 139.81. Danielle Lowe second in 143.65, and Hannah in third in 142.73. So Siobhan is about three seconds upon Hannah. She is, and she doesn't visibly seem to be turning off too much, though. I don't think she's going for broke, because she doesn't need to. That comes tomorrow night in the final. But look at the gap between Siobhan Marie O'Connor. Daniel Lowe's trying to make a bit of an imprint. Hannah Miley's starting to come back, but very slowly towards her as we watch the clock tick over. She'll be touching any second now. And in fact, that was uh, considerably slower than she went this morning. I'm not quite sure what that's about. 2.12.27. Oh, sorry, no, the personal best, you're right, sorry, Ross just pointing out the qualifying time was 2.13.84, uh, the time that she did this morning, so it is a little bit quicker than she went this morning, nowhere near a personal best, however, Danielle Lowe in second and Hannah Miley in third, and here comes the procession. Look how far she's... Hannah Miley is, is a world-class swimmer in this event. She's probably just swimming to make the final, and she has had a busy programme already, but that is under the world qualification time of... 2.13.14, so Siobhan Marie O'Connor 
is really on fire. I expect her and Shavi, uh, Sophie Allen tomorrow to go in head head who can make that uh, team for the World Championships. Plenty more time to come down from Siobhan Marie O'Connor as it is for tonight. The winning time in the end was 2 minutes 12.27. Danielle Lowe in second and 2.15.21 for Hannah Miley will uh, progress her through to the final tomorrow night. It looks like Siobhan Marie O'Connor could be a favourite tomorrow. If she can repeat that time in the final tomorrow, she could be on the plane to Barcelona. I actually saw her having dinner last night. She was actually really nervous about today with her parents. Wasn't sure if she was in the form she wanted to to do those kind of times, but she's wiped all those cobwebs away. I think she's going to be absolutely fine. And it linked really nicely with the, with the VT we saw with Mark Perry, because I know that Siobhan O'Connor was one of those athletes that did develop through the world-class development programme, and now she's obviously on the podium programme and she will be looking to go into Barcelona and really taking down that 200 metres individual medley because she actually missed out on that race for London, came back, qualified for London in the 100 metres breaststroke but I think she loves the 200 individual medley, she's showing Hannah Miley how to do it and we will look forward to seeing her perform that in the final tomorrow. Coming up we have the 100 metres backstroke, the women's 100 metres backstroke and in that race um, um, we have the 50 backstroke coming up as well. We have the 50 metres breaststroke. We have the 50 metres butterfly. And I'm joined back by Ross. We've had lots of exciting swims so far. Did you really think that Siobhan O'Connor was going to perform in that way? Yeah, I even think she, she's back. You know, she's got a lot more to, in the tank for tomorrow night. Um, she really is a class act. Last year, she didn't qualify on the 200 metres IM for the Olympic Games. So she went back to Bath retrained herself and then qualified for the 100 metres breaststroke. So that shows you what kind of character she is. I think she was messing around with the field there. Sophie Allen looked incredibly strong as well. So Hannah's going to have a, a big job on her hands if she wants to retain her British title. And now we've got Lizzie Simmons coming up on the 100 metres backstroke. She's got to wipe away what happened yesterday and hopefully come back and do a qualification time to make the final again tomorrow. Certainly has. She had a disappointing swim last night. She wanted to make the qualifi qualifying time and she didn't. So now she's back in again. She's got to use all that mental strength she has and now knuckle down, get into the final tomorrow night and hopefully quali qualify on the 100 metres. Well, we will find that out right now with Bob Ballard, who is commentating on the women's 100 metres backstroke. First semi-final containing the likes of, as you heard mentioned, Lizzie Simmons in four, Long Quigley in three, and Rachel Lefley in lane number five. Let's have a look at uh, Lizzie Simmons in lane number four. Well, she's going to just do a little plunge so we can't see her because she's going to go in, in lane number four. But Lauren Quigley will be looking to go sub-60 for the first time, as will Rachel Lefley. In fact, the only sub... 60 swimmer in this field is Lizzie Simmons. 59.43. Laura Quigley's qualifying time, 102.72. She can go a couple of seconds quicker than that, as indeed can Lizzie Simmons Elizabeth in lane Simmons number four. We we'll see some of the newcomers emerge, the likes of Emma Smith, Emma Saunders, of the uh, kind of new intake coming into this cycle up to Rio, but uh, though Lizzie Simmons prefers the 200, she's become a pretty adept 100 swimmer, Ross. Yeah, and she certainly has to now. She didn't qualify for the 200 metres backstroke last night, so her chances of going to the World Championship team, uh, her chances of going to the World Championship team in Barcelona all rest down on this 100 metres. You saw such a world-class turn from Lizzie, going 14 metres underneath the water, and she popped up first place. She is first place. Lauren Quigley is going to try and make sure she doesn't stay in first place for very long. And she's right alongside Lizzie Simmons. But Lizzie is holding her off for the time being, though Quigley is coming back very, very quickly indeed. Right alongside. And Lauren Quigley might just get the touch here. And it is Emma Saunders. No, it's not. <laughs> Our computer's gone completely mad. I'm sure that Lauren Quigley got that time and Lizzie Simmons was in second place. 101.02 for the winner and 101.24 for second place. And Lauren Quigley just edging out Lizzie Simmons into second place. 
Rachel Lefty in third place, uh, 101.55. So all those girls separated by around about half a second. They came down onto the touch. Long quickly had that faster finish going into the last seven metres. But it looked like to me that Lizzie probably backed off a little bit. Those girls will be easily into the final tomorrow night. Yeah, just confirm, because our computer's got a little bit haywire. 61.02, Lauren Quigley. Second place to Lizzie Simmons, 101.24. And Rachel Lefley in third, 101.55. Those are the 1, 2, 3. Lauren Quigley's time, the winning time is 61.02. And that is a new personal best, I think, for uh, Rachel Lefley. No, just outside. Lauren Quigley for today, then 60.5, so she's got a bit to make up in the final tomorrow, but she's made it into the final along with, here we go, confirmation, Lauren Quigley, Lizzie Simmons, Rachel Lovely, and Emma Saunders in fourth place with Brittany Horton, having to wait on tenterhooks to see if she makes it through in fifth. Imagine Emma Saunders, fourth place, will make it through to that final tomorrow night. The next team, you do see the, the 50 specialist, Georgia Davis. She trains in Swansea with the likes of Gemma Lowe and Jazz Carlin. So they're already having, a, well, Jazz is certainly having a, an amazing competition. Gemma seems to be hitting some form on that 100 meters butterfly. So look out for Georgia Davis in lane five. She'll be fast down the first 50. Let's see if she can hang on in the second 50. Give you an indication of where world times are. 58, 8, 4, 59, 1, 7, 1 and 2, 59, 3, 4, 1, 2 and 3. Only Brits under a minute yet. Maybe it'll happen in this second semi final of the 100 backstroke. And we'll be looking at lanes four and five. Just going to follow love the fastest qualifier from City of Manchester Aquatics. Georgia Davis, however, has gone sub one minute, 59.92, her personal best in lane five. The world record holder for this event is her very own Gemma Spoffer from 2009, when she won the World Championship gold medal in Rome. Yeah, 58-1-2 it was. We're talking about four years ago, almost uh, not quite to the day, but the World Championships before last. Now, is anybody capable here? Well, we know Georgia Davis is, but anybody else capable of joining Georgia Davis in the sub-minute club? It's a fairly exclusive club here in Great Britain. Lizzie Simmons has done it. Georgia has done it. And so, too, as we mentioned, is the now retired Gemma Spoffer. So in terms of active swimmers, I think there's only two people who've done it. Yep, I think you're right there, Bob. Jessica Fuller Love had a fantastic 200 metres backstroke last night, so she's obviously on form from the City of Manchester Aquatic Club. Be good if she can uh, bring a few through here, Georgia Davis. Well, they say she's not the fastest qualifier. Jessica Fuller Love of the City of Manchester Aquatics was. She did uh, 61.17 is her personal best. She was 61.41 this morning. This one should be ramped up a little bit as we see Georgia Davis get into a stroke very, very early. And at 25, she's already opened up a half a body length advantage over the rest. But I expect to see that. She's represented Wales at the Commonwealth Games and Britain over at the World Championships. So expect to see her out there in front of the first 50 metres. She'll go into the wall along with Jessica Fuller Love. And third place to Charlotte McKenzie. Isabella Hindley in fourth place. 29.48 is the 50 split. 29.69 for Jessica Fuller Love as they come back towards us. And as it has been since the start, Georgia Davis continues to control this race. She certainly does. It looks like she's been working incredibly hard on that second 50. We normally see her going out fast, but don't normally see her coming back this strong. And she's looking incredibly strong. It's five metres to go. She's going to hold off Jessica Fuller Love into the wall in 60.45, the winning time. Jessica Fuller Love has gone sub 61 for the first time, 10093. And Charlotte McKenzie of the first club has gone sub 102 for the very first time. And she finishes in a time of 101.24. That's a huge personal best, over a second for her. And uh, she's starting to head in the right way. And it's good to see some of the youngsters emerge in this meet and making very big inroads into their personal bests. Yeah, it's great to see the talent coming through. Lizzie now qualifies for that final tomorrow night in fifth position. But Georgia Davis, there's no doubt about it, over half a second quicker than anybody else going into the final tomorrow night. And Isabella Hindley, who finished fourth in that race, will claim the last place for the final tomorrow night, 103.03. So that time that uh, she did there, 
is just outside her personal best, but uh, good enough for uh, to sneak through. So Kirsty Simpson just missing out on the final of the 100 backstroke tomorrow night. That was a great swim there by the backstroke girls. Georgia Davis being the fastest qualifier. But let's have a look at the first heat back over the replays to see how they did do those qualifications to the semi final. Now, interestingly, Lizzie Simmons always goes out a long way underwater. I'm pretty sure I've heard a story that she's managed to go underwater for about 100 meters before almost passing out. So that's the strongest part of her race. But it was actually Lauren Quigley that really did take that first heat by storm and not Lizzie Simmons back into second. Lauren Quigley just got that on the touch. Lizzie had a fantastic turn going about 14 metres underwater. As you see now, the second semi final, Georgia Davis went out strong and also came back strong to be a clear leader in tomorrow night's final. Now we've got a couple of finals coming up, Ross. We've got the, the men's 50 metres butterfly. We've got to look forward to Ben Proud, who's already been swimming this morning in the semi and this afternoon in the semi final. He's going to back up with the final tonight. Do you think he can do another great swim? I certainly do. The pressure's off him now. He's broken that British record, Mark Foster's record in the last 10 years. So it's an incredible swim. He smashed it in the semi final. It'll be interested to see how he does in the final right now. Well, let's see if he can smash it up. Bob, handing over to you to see that race unfold. Two big personal bests today and a British record for Ben Proud. 23.29 for the man in lane number four. Now, if he improves that by just over a tenth of a second, he will work his way into the top five in the world for 2013. Ben Lowe in lane number one. Dan Scott, two, the city of Glasgow. Jamie Graham, also from Glasgow in three. Then Ben Proud, 23-29. New British record holder, James Doolan in five from Loughborough. Harry Needs, who is the fiancé of Rebecca Adlington in six. Sam Horrocks, city of Manchester in seven. And Jamie Thorpe of Leicester in eight. But it should all be, and this is a big surprise, about the man in lane number four. Ben Proud, 23.29, just about time for Ross to get in before he finishes. Yeah, that's right. And what's great about Ben, he's not the best underwater, but you can see now he's about half a metre, if not more, off body length above the rest of the field with 10 metres to go. It looks quick. Just how quick is this race from Ben Proud? Is it going to be storming? Is it going to be storming? <laughs> Wow, what has he done? 23.10. That is the third fastest time in the world for 2013. And it's another huge, and I mean huge in 50 terms, British record. Puts him ahead of Roland Schumann, of Florin Manadou, and Cesar Cello. And you know what? That was certainly not the perfect race. His underwater is not the best, and that finish, he really glided on. I, could, you know, I think he can go under 23 seconds and, and get a 22 point, because that finish was not great. He just didn't judge it quite right. We'll see now the finish in the last five metres. He's coming in, and we'll just watch how he glides into the wall there. Yeah, his head pops up. He's got a lot of work to do on that with his coach, John Rudd in Plymouth. He can just get quicker and quicker and quicker, and that's what's so exciting. And he's only 18. Massive. Absolutely. It doesn't turn 19 until September. 18 years of age, Ben Proud. 23.29 has become 23.10. He's taken two tenths of a second off a rapid time anyway in the semi finals. Let's hear what he has to say. Ben Proud is now with Andy Sixsmith talking about two British records. So tonight, the new, new British record holder, Benjamin Proud. Ben, I saw your tweet a little bit earlier that you thought you were in a dream. Are you in reality now? Just as well. Waiting to wake up anytime soon, so it's been a great day. <laughs> and third fastest in the world now. How does that feel? It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to believe, really. I'll tell you what, Ben, I'm going to let you get away and celebrate because I can imagine there's a fair bit to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, Ben Proud, your new British record holder and British champion in the 50 metre butterfly. Incredible swim from Ben. I just alluded to this only 18 years of age. Sprinters normally start to peak around about late 20s. So if he's got another 10 years of development, where can this boy go? 
Well, exciting, of course, although th this is a bit the dilemma, is the 50 fly could easily get dropped off for selection here. If there are 30 swimmers, already the policy is that the 50 sprints that are freestyle may not be included. So surely a man ranked third in the world, you've got to take him. Yeah, I reckon you have, but he has also done a, a very, very competitive time on the 50 metres freestyle. So hopefully the, over the two events, and also, he's got the 100 metres freestyle to come later on in the week. What can he do? If he's, got, if he's going that kind of time on the 50 metres, what can he do on the 100 metres? And he seems to be knocking seconds, half seconds off his PB. He's just knocked off nearly half a second off the old British record, which was Mark Foster. Mark Foster is no, no snail in, in terms of swimming terms, so that is an incredible swim. So what I'm looking forward to is the head-to-head -head with him and Adam Brown in under freestyle. Adam Brown breaking the British record the other day, him coming close to the British record. When they get him to, together in the under freestyle, that is going to be fireworks later in the week. It certainly is, and it can only be great for British swimming. Adam's out, out in America training in Auburn, Ben's in Plymouth. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what programme you are, if you're swimming fast, it doesn't matter. As long as you can swim for Britain, that's the main thing. And these two guys are going to go head-to-head -head in the 100 metres freestyle. And in terms of... Britain as a whole is only great for the relay teams. Let's read you through the 1 to 8 then. Rebecca Swells of Preston in 1, Georgina Evans, City of Liverpool 2, Stacey Tad going in 3 in the final of the 50 breaststroke for women. Catherine Johnston is the Scottish record holder. 31.5 is what she needs. 31.48 is her personal best. She's the only swimmer really in range of getting that qualifying time, you'd think. Sophie Taylor back in again. She's only just got out of the pool, and here she is again in lane number five. Rachel Wilson of Derwentside in six. Andrea Strachan of Edinburgh in seven. And Sarah Vasey in lane number eight. So it should be all about lane number four. And, oh, no, we've got a little problem with the timing. Did anybody fall in there? No, they didn't, fortunately. It could be quite awkward because they were right primed to go, and then they were told to stand down. That's the worst time possible when you're right in the middle of... Uh, just about ready to topple. We have a little technical glitch. So it gives us a bit more time while we're waiting, Ross, just to go back over that uh, 50 fly. Now, when I talked to John Rudd, who we saw on the programme yesterday, earlier in the week, he did say, do you know what? His butterfly is better than his freestyle. And that, that's kind of been proved here, hasn't it? Certainly has. I don't know whether he's doing the, the 100 metres butterfly. So that would be... Uh, yeah, he's, he's just improving day by day by day. And if, if John said he's, he's a raw talent, then he obviously knows what talent looks like. And he's coming here, breaking British records, going close to breaking British records on the freestyle event. Now, we've, we've only seen a couple of guys go 48 on the 100 metres freestyle since the textile suits came in. Could he be the next one? Well, of course, he has Ruta Meliatite already from Lithuania. Now he has a homegrown talent to look after as well. And there is the 1 to 8 for the final of the women's 50 breaststroke. Catherine Johnson, as I mentioned, the Scottish record holder in four. Stacey Tad go for a bit of a splash and dash in three. Better known for the 100 and the 200. We've seen Catherine on so many occasions this week, leading at the first 50 on the 100 metres breaststroke. Now this comes down to her speciality. She represented Scotland in the Commonwealth Games in Delhi on this event, so she is the specialised 50 metre breaststroke. She is ranked first for this final. Let's see if she can back that up and finish first. Only one swimmer has gone sub 30 this year, and it does happen to be another Plymouth swimmer. The aforementioned Ruta Meliatite, what a discovery. It's one of those really kind of freak things that, that she came to Plymouth and all of a sudden became a world-class star pretty much overnight. Yeah, I remember seeing her in, uh, we did a competition last year in Monte Carlo, and she stood up and raced and she went around about the 68, and people were talking about, oh, can this girl uh, medal? I was like, not a chance. You know, there's some great swimmers in the world at the minute. Not a chance. First morning, or first morning she swam in London, popped up with a 65, fastest time in the world that year. And then you start to think, can this girl get a medal? Went into the semi-final, 65 again. Then you're thinking, this girl can win a medal. Pops up in the final, 65 again, and wins it. What an incredible story. And I'm glad she's saying she's, she was, you know, she's made in Britain. And the similarities between her and Ben is they seem nerveless. They don't seem to worry about anything. They don't seem to get phased about anything. They don't let anything exterior get to them at all. They, they just get on and do it. Certainly do. I don't know if that's uh, part of the, the plan, that they can just, you know, just 
get in there and swim to the best and not let nerves get to them. There's no, the most pressure cooker environment is an Olympic final. And she just stood up there and delivered. For Ben, this is the biggest competition that he's done. This is the pressure cooker on the 50 meters. That's where all the pressure is. And he stood up and delivered again. Right, let's uh, remind you of who's who here. Catherine Johnson in four. Sophie Taylor in five and Stacey Tad in lane three should be the main protagonists in the 50 breaststroke. Let's see what the Scottish record holder can do. She needs to get a qualifying time for Barcelona of 31.50. She is the only swimmer in this race who has been in that range. Can she do it, Ross? She's already in the lead. Coming up to 25 metres to go. Stacey Tad's very close. I'm very surprised to see Stacey so close. She's normally a 200 metre specialist. This is Catherine Johnston that's leading out now with 15 metres to go. Can she hold on? Stacey Tad to her left. Sophie Taylor to her right. She looks like she's going to win, though. Stacey Tad is giving her a good run for her money, as too is Sophie Taylor at the touch. 31.77, not good enough. And in fact, 31.75, Stacey Tad getting the touch by two one hundredths of a second. Neither that nor the second place, obviously, is good enough for Barcelona. Sophie Taylor, 31.87. But from Stacey Tad's point of view, that is the quickest she has ever been. But about uh, half a second, actually, 32.15. She's taken down to 31.75. Catherine Johnson edged out by two one-hundredths of a second. In fact, one, two, and three separated by 12 one-hundredths of a second in the end. It's exactly the same time Catherine Johnston did in the semi-final, and she's done that again in the final. So that's consistency for you. I'm surprised to see Stacey's had winning a 50 event in Britain. We've already spoke about how she's uh, you know, a world-class over the 200 metres breaststroke, and she does like to come down to the 100, but I've never actually seen her come down to the 50 and win an event. That's a very good time and good for her later on in the week. 31.75 winning time, Catherine Johnston 31.77. And Sophie Taylor, 31.87. I know Steve Parry, who's in the presidency, is going to love it because we can talk about Stacey Tad's earrings very shortly because I'm sure that they will be there in uh, prominence as we go down to Paul Deck and hear what Stacey Tad has to say about her swim. And Andy Sixsmith is there. Thanks, Alan. I am here indeed with a rather surprised Stacey Tad, having won that 50 metre breaststroke. Stacey, just sum up your feeling. I'm very shocked. It's the same as you. Can't believe it. I've always wanted to be a sprinter. Um, I'm just really happy with the time. And how much confidence does that give you ahead of your preferred 200 event? Obviously, I've been swimming really well this week, um, so fingers crossed things carry on that way. Well, Stacey, absolutely delighted to see you win that one. Many congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, your 50-metre breaststroke champion, Stacey Tad. Great job, Stacey Tad. Training partner of mine back when I was swimming, so so pleased to see her on the top of the podium. Now, all of this presentation that you're seeing here at the event, all the cameras and all the people behind the scenes, there's a, there's a big team behind that. And we've actually got Becky Milnes here to talk about some of the opportunities in sports presentation. Now, Becky, what's it all about and what's out there for people to get involved in? OK, so as you just said, our national events can't run without a dedicated team of volunteers. So we're always looking for people to get involved. So what British Women are offering is a course specifically in the art of sports presentation. So for those of you who don't know what sports presentation is, basically involves everything that you see or hear at an event. So from the big sponsor boards that you see, the great balloons that we've got here today, to the commentator's voice, due to the music that you hear from the presentation, everything that brings the event to life. So what the course will cover is everything from how you pick the right piece of music to get that goosebump feeling, through to how to make your tone of voice really excite the audience. And we're looking for passionate individuals who are really excited to get involved and can entertain our audiences. So, so And you're here volunteering as well, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm a swimmer myself, but also get involved with the volunteering. Um, and this is an area that I'm incredibly passionate about, so I'm really excited that we can offer this opportunity. So the course that we're offering is on the 27th of July. It's here at Pums Forge, um, and it's alongside the national and youth age groups. Um, basically, if you're interested, you just need to go along to our website, which is www.swimming.org, or speak to any of the event staff here and just get involved. And what I want to know is, you responsible for blowing up these really large balloons behind you? Unfortunately, no, that wasn't my job. I feel like I would go a little bit lightheaded if that was the case. Uh, but they do look fantastic, and that's exactly the sort of thing that we're trying to create with the sports presentation. Well, it's great to hear from you, Becky. And these opportunities are out there for you, so you've got to get involved because you can be here at these type of events. Now, coming up next, we have the men's 50 metres backstroke. So back over to Bob to see that final. Now, will it be Marco Lochran or Liam Tancock? Now, Liam's already been edged out once this week by 
Chris Walker heaven. He won't want to be edged out in the 15 meters backstroke. That will probably ruin his week totally. Yeah, that's right. This is Liam's event. He, you know, he always says he's a 100 meters backstroker, but this is the one he's won his world championship gold medal for the last two world championships. So he's not going to want to let this go. He wants to qualify for the team for Barcelona and he wants to represent his country. What do you see in the one to eight? But I think all attention will be on the men in four and five. Marco Lockham, better known for the 100 and 200 backstroke. Liam, of course, does the 100 as well, but made his name on the 50 at the World Championships in Montreal in 2005, where he won the bronze medal. Now, he has the British record. He needs a qualifying time of 25 2 7. Well, they both do. Marco or Liam. Both of them have done that time. It's a real splash and dash. And Marco Lockeren is heading Liam Tancock. And it's right side by side. Tancock's coming strong at the end. Tancock's probably going to get it. Just get it. It's going to be marginal between Tancock and Marco Lockeren. The Tancock 25 04. He's got it. No, he hasn't. 25.03, Marco Lochran gets it by one one hundredth of a second. That's got to come down to the touch of Liam Tancock. That was not a great finish, because visibly, as they went into the wall, I thought Tancock had got it. One one hundredth. The good news is they both done the time for Barcelona, but one one hundredth separating first and second, and it is Marco Lochran who was fastest in the heats and is now fastest in the final. So Liam Tank has been beaten in the final of the 50 match. How, let's look how he lost this one. Yeah, Marco had a better start. He came up first at 15 meters, but then Liam really came through. And even now, you're looking on the screen, it looks like Liam was fat off. Oh, it's all the way down to the top. You know, I think Marco probably had more momentum going into that final stroke that carried him to the wall first, and he won that race by 1 100th of a second. Yeah, I apologise, because visibly it looked to me like Liam Tanko had got that, I have to say. I, I, think he, I think he was winning with one stroke to go, but Marco just was... Liam probably finished a half a stroke too early and had to glide into the wall. It looked perfect to me, uh, Liam's finish, but Marco carried that momentum in going into the final. 25.03, the winning time for Marco Lockeren, and he'll talk about it now with Andy Sixsmith. Thanks, Alan. I am here indeed with the 50 metre backstroke champion, Marco Lockeren. Marco, fantastic swim. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, it was great. I was in the world. He's a world champion. It was a nice race, and uh, I think he's the one who helped me push, for, push me along. So, a little bit of a celebration in the heats earlier on today. Were you really confident coming into this? No, not at all. Like, uh, I haven't PB'd in five years, you know, so I've been sticking around and uh, starting to pay off, so uh, yeah, I celebrated earlier, it might have been a bit of an early celebration, but I celebrated then as well for the win. Well, you need celebrating, fantastic stuff, Marco. Ladies and gentlemen, your 50 metre backstroke men's champion. Quite a shock there, seeing Liam Tancock getting beaten, but Marco um, taking the first place and also doing the qualification time. Now, let's have a look at some of the highlights of the last finals we've just seen. They came thick and fast. And um, first up, we had the 50 metres fly. And Ross, it was quite a, a splash and dash there, but Ben Proud, as he has been doing all week, was the first one to take the touch. Three or four metres on a 50 metre event. Is it, this is the best of British that we've got here. And he's winning that event by three or four metres. Absolutely incredible. The next race was the 50 metres breaststroke for women. So surprised to see someone like Stacey Tad winning that. She's specially uh, specialised on the 200 metres but, uh, breaststroke. You can see now she's not even winning with five metres to go. Catherine Johnston is, but she came through strong. The last two strokes, she really powerful and got to the wall first. So pleased for Stacey there because she is a, a distant swimmer, but she's always wanted to be a sprinter. So actually, that was right her, right up her street. And then finally, we had the 50 back straight, which you've just seen. Liam Tancock being beaten. That's a shock. I think that's the shock of the week. Um, it was sh a shock that Chris Walker hadn't beat him on the 100, but this is Liam Tancock's event. He's won the World Championships the last two times. Uh, Marco has beaten him by 1 100 a second. So even in the last stroke, it looked like Liam was winning that, but Marco got his hand on the wall and has defeated Liam for the first time in, in many years, certainly in domestic competition. And it really like, it looked like it meant a lot to Marco to get that top spot, so great to see that. Now, we've had lots of guessing today, but I think the most important one and the biggest one here today 
It is Becky Adlington, OBE. She doesn't like being called OBE, but actually Becky Adlington, our proudest guest that we've had on this show. And she's going to be telling us a bit about what she's got looking forward to in the future. Now, Becky hasn't done a lot of interviews recently, so we should be really proud that on the fast lane, we have Becky Adlington here to do an interview with us. So let's find out how she got on with her masterclass this morning. And we are very lucky tonight because we are joined by the one and only Rebecca Adlington. I do not need to give her much of an introduction and I'm actually going to let her do most of the talking because she's got a lot to talk to us about tonight. Now, Becky, we've already seen earlier today that you were taking a masterclass with um, Becky's brides. Yeah. Now, tell us a bit about what you were doing there. It's the British, uh, British Gas Swim Britain campaign, which obviously Swim Britain's the main focus, but because I got engaged, we kind of thought a different take on it, an added bonus is Becky's brides, which a group of brides get together and we kind of bring along their bridesmaids or just friends or whatever just give them a few tips they get fit before their wedding and we just have a laugh doing it and it's something we all do as a team um, so I met them today it was amazing they were so lovely they were so much fun they were keen swimmers as well so it was brilliant to meet them today and then um, we'll be back on the, here on the 1st of September doing the relay challenge where did that idea come from I think it was just the fact that I got engaged, so everyone was a bit like, oh, she's a bride now. And then they were like, oh, hold on, I bet loads of brides across the country want to get fit. It's kind of a big thing when you get married, isn't it? Gotta got lose a bit of extra weight. And you could just do it with, with your friends and family. And it's something such good fun. And then it was like, oh, they could win a chance to be on my team as well. So it was perfect. We've got some shots here of you at the masterclass. And so you're obviously taking them through the strokes of, of what it takes to be a swimmer like you. Were they quite involved and really into it? Yeah, definitely. They were they weren't kind of like ex-club swimmers or anything like that, but they were keen open water swimmers. They had been to the Great Swim Series in Windermere. They had swam outside. So it's kind of like they had such a good background, really, because open water swimmers is tough. So they had that. They knew what they were doing. They had good stroke. It was just little tweaks here and there and having a bit more fun, really. And they weren't in awe of you. They kind of were quite happy in your company and weren't starstruck in any way. No, they were absolutely lovely. No, they were, they were so lovely. I got on really well with them. They're here tonight watching. Oh, well, I'm sure they have lots of wonderful days ahead of them with their <laughs> wedding. Now, you used to swim here in Sheffield, didn't you? And what memories do you have of, tri of racing here in Sheffield, especially as an Olympic champion? Yeah, well, most of our major trials have been here in Sheffield. It's kind of very weird now being watching to not racing and not get, going through all them emotions of getting nervous and kind of the, the walk up, the cool down, the call room, all that stuff that goes with it. So it's really different, but I'm enjoying it. It's so nice to be back and just supporting the team it was amazing to see jazz calling him the eight inch of free yesterday she swam unbelievable i text jazz straight away i just i was so so pleased for her. obviously that's it's when you're close to an event you obviously feel like it's your baby but it's not anymore and it was great to see somebody else kind of not stepping into my shoes but taking on that and jazz just saw a world-class time and she would have done amazing at the olympics just gone if She'd swam that there, so I think she's just bounced back from missing the games, and it was an incredible swim yesterday. We've been doing a lot about what it takes for an elite athlete and what elite athletes go through. Now, what sort of thing goes through your mind before you went up for those big races, and maybe what Jas was going through as well? Just nerves. I used to get so, so nervous. It was just, for me, I always used to just go back and remember the training. I think 800, you don't need twitch, you don't need all that sort of stuff. 800 is a long race, so you've got to pace yourself, and you've got to be ready mentally for an 800 free. So I just remembered everything in training, all them tough sessions and I just gained my confidence from knowing that I had done the work and I'm sure Jazz was the same yesterday she knew she was in good shape it was just about putting in a well paced race and that's what she did. And you've been passing on all your knowledge and you're involved with Swim Britain aren't you? What, yes. What's that all about? It's a relay challenge, it's going to take place 10 locations across the country um, and it's brilliant it's just a place for people for anyone you don't have to be a swimmer, you can be a non-swimmer just sign up, you get together with a group of friends and we do a relay challenge, it's not a race so and it just hopefully will encourage more and more people to get involved in the sport and i think i might be involved with it as well actually they're yes. roping everybody in yes. and just to finish you've got this pledge to get more youngsters involved in swimming how's that go going for you yeah it's my own learned swim program which has been very very different doing that side of things but it's going really really well we're hopefully going to be piloting it out in september um, in three sites across the country and then hopefully in the new year it'll be across the nation 
I ran away and learned to swim program, which is amazing, as I'd love, love to get more and more kids swimming, because I was shocked the other week with the statistics that what, over one million kids leave primary school unable to swim 25 metres, so I hope to change that. Well, it's great to see all the great work you are doing, Becky, and Thank to have you. you here today. Enjoy the rest of the meet. Thank you. There you have it, Rebecca Adlington, joining us here on the Fast Lane, bringing you all the exclusive action from the British Cast Swimming Championships. So that was a little bit earlier on today. Um, she seemed to be very positive about what she wants to do with her future career and take it to the next level. Now, we've had a look at our Twitter feed and we saw Rebecca Addington um, talk, about, uh, Karen, um, talk about Jazz Carling and how well she's done. And Karen Pickering has actually tweeted astonishing swim from Jazz Carling in the 1500 metres free. She obliterated the GB record and did um, a great time. So it's great to have those sort of tweets and the likes of Karen Pickering who've already seen in you today being talking about how well Jazz Carling has done and it looks like Becky Allenton was quite pleased to see that there's someone else filling her shoes. Um, so let's take a look at more tweets that we've got here. I'm just looking at our stream here. Well done to Sophie Taylor. Mims Weber has said that, taking third and 50 metres breaststroke. And those are the medal ceremonies that we have just been seeing. We've seen the Stacey Tad take the gold in the 50 metres breaststroke. Marco Lochran taking the 50 metres backstroke. And Ben Proud taking the 50 metres butterfly. But we have another set of finals coming up for you, and it's the multi-class races coming up. And first up, we have the women's 200 metres individual medley. So let's hand back to Bob Bala to find out how they got on. We'll find out in due course here, Kate, as they go to start. Emma Simmons in this one, Natalie Massey, and of course, Jessica Jane Applegate. She does not hold the S14 British record for this. Hmm, for a couple Yet. of minutes, Ross, a couple of minutes, maybe. <laughs> Certainly. Amy Marin's back too, and Tully Kearney, Claire Cashmore, and Liz Johnson, all your favourites, are back here for the 200 metres individual medley. Yeah, that's the, the S14 record, 232.05 is held by Chloe Davis. Jessica Jane Applegate in lane number four is going for it. And Ellie Simmons goes in lane number one in the S6s. She holds, of course, the world record. Uh, but I don't think she's quite in the form at the moment for a 3.05.39. That's the time that she set at the Paralympics in London in 2012. But we will be interested to see how she gets on. And of course, as always at this point, I have to remind you that the winner is not necessarily the winner. First person to finish won't necessarily be the person who wins the race overall because we have multi-classifications here. SM6, SM14, SM10, SM9 all involved. So when they finish, their time will be converted to points which are relevant to their particular discipline. So uh, it could be, for example, that uh, Ellie Simmons finishes in last place visibly, but actually will pick up the most points. But as I say, I'm always intrigued to see what Jessica Jane Applegate can do, and I'm as intrigued as ever as she sets the pace in lane four. Yeah, she's miles out in front already. You can see that lane four, Jessica Jane Applegate is an S14, as is Natalie Massey in lane three. So that's the comparison for Jessica Jane that the lane below her is also an S14 so she's out in front by a good two or three meters now uh, halfway down the backstroke leg 232.05 is that uh, S14 record the S10 is 237.90 and 305.39 for Ellie Simmons so Gemma Armand who holds the S10 record will be looking to uh, get pretty close to that but of course Look at that uh, comparison that Ross just pointing out to me between four and three. Natalie Massey, who's a pretty decent competitor, uh, Jessica Jane Applegate has uh, almost left her for dead. Amy Marin's the uh, closest to her right now in the adjoining lane, and she's in a different category. She's an SM9. Amy Marin, we saw her yesterday saying, I apologize if I swim slow, I'm in hard work. Then she went on and did a second PB, and now she's flying down this breaststroke leg, leaving Jessica Jane Applegate as we speak. Natalie Massey's closing up on Jessica Jane as well. So at this race now, as we look at it, it is Amy Marin that's going to go into the war first with only one length to go. Amy Marin coming in for her turn. Jessica Jane Applegate following up very soon afterwards. And let's see what uh, Amy can do off the turn. 159.12 is her 150 split. Second place to Harriet Lee, 201.23. Jessica Jane Applegate, who uh, is swimming in the s 
M14, of course, M for medley, by the way, in case you don't know, 201.88. How's this going to shape up on the freestyle leg here? It is Amy Marin that's leading this. Jessica Jane is closing her down as we speak. Every stroke, she's getting closer and closer. We've got 10 metres to go in the neck and neck as we go into the final five metres. <laughs> Here she comes. She's going to win it visibly. Now, how many points will this convert to? 975 points. It is not, for a change, a British record from Jessica Jane, but a uh, pretty decent time. 234.69 for her is a new personal best. Second place in terms of points at the moment, Natalie Massey, 914. Amy Marrow with 864, but we haven't seen Ellie Simmons finish yet. And we haven't seen Liz Johnson on the far side finish. We will see Ellie finishing very shortly in lane zero. She's coming in the last few meters for Ellie Simmons. Let's see what time she's going to do and how many points it's going to bring her. 908 points, puts her in third place, 311.45. And Liz Johnson will be the last to finish in lane number nine. Another of the SM6s, so it looks like the result is complete. Jessica Jane Applegate in first place. Well, there's a surprise. Second, Natalie Massey with 9.14. And Eddie Simmons, 9.08. As Liz Johnson finishes with 3.33.39 for a 6.56. But Jessica Jane Applegate, not a British record, but of course, another personal best. Certainly, in Eleanor Simmons in lane uh, in coming in third, six seconds out of her outside of her own world record, but still good enough to pick up third position. Natalie Massey in second, with a point score of 9:14. So here we go. I say the times are kind of irrelevant because it's not their times, but their classification converted to points. 9:75, Jessica Jane Applegate. 9:14 to Natalie Massey. 9:08 for Ellie Simmons. 8:64 for Amy Marin and Reagan Doig in fifth place. But yeah, Jessica Jane only what now four or five weeks away from the World Paralympic Swimming event in Montreal starts on the 12th of August. I think between now and then she'll be honing her skills and that uh, time will come down considerably. Everything she does and every event she takes part in, she does an impressive time. I say not on this occasion a British record, but uh, still not bad at all from Jessica Jane, who's feeling a little bit more comfortable with uh, doing media things these days. And we will be hearing from uh, the pride of Norwich, Jessica Jane Applegate, everyone last night, and here she is once again telling us all about the swim from Andy Six Smith. I am indeed, Alan. I'm here with Jessica Jane Applegate. Jess, another win. How do you keep on doing it? Um, I'm not quite sure because I'm in heavy training at the moment, but everything's going well, and my coach isn't here at the minute, so hopefully I've seen it online. <laughs> And all this heavy training, obviously, does this, these sort of performances give you even more confidence out of Montreal? Um, yeah, definitely, knowing that I can do that in heavy training. Brilliant. Well, Jess, we really appreciate talking to us. And uh, ladies and gents, your 200 IM champion tonight, Jessica Jane Applegate. Extremely Good sweet girl, she looks. Yeah. We saw her in, in the British International Meet, British Gas International Meet earlier on in the in the year not so comfortable with the media at that point but now she's looking really familiar with the surroundings really coming out of her shell and she's going to have to get used to it when she goes to the world championships later on this year next up we have the men's 200 meters individual medley going in this one and again a lot of names that you will recognize likes of ben proctor setting records james crisp has been around for a long time jack bridge sam hind all in there and we have 10 going to start for the 200 meters individual medley and a few records to be knocked off, no doubt, along the way here, Ross. Certainly cracking swim last night from Ben Proctor. He goes in lane four. James Chris, as you said, been around since goodness knows how long. Plenty of medals in the bag for James Chris. He's in lane five. The old man now at the age of 30. There is Ben Proctor, by the way, from Newquay. And uh, he is the man that is looking to try and beat Dan Pepper's 218.74. Do you know what? In the form he's been in, his qualifying time was 221. Perhaps he's holding a little bit back for Montreal, but he could just 
get close to that 218.74 here, Ben Brock. We just saw James Crisp, who will be competing in the SM9s. Once again, normally we say S9, but it's SB for the breaststroke and SM for the medley. There is uh, the older of the Hind boys, who's now swimming out of the city of Newport. He was at Swansea, and before that, he was at Nova Centurion, but now at the city of Newport, Sam Hind. There is Morgan Peters. Most and Andrew Mullen again. Most of these guys that have been interviewed have been talking about how much heavy work they're doing. And it's really difficult to be able to swim fast when you are in hard training. So, you know, it's looking fantastic for, for when they do finally get a rest and they shave all their hair off and, and then they can absolutely fly at the World Championships. Is it like swimming with uh, weights on your feet, that kind of thing? <laughs> it certainly is. It's a, it's a horrible feeling, but it's great when you get to the World Championships or the Olympic Games and then you can really let, let fly. So, in this we have 7, 8, 14, 9, 10. We almost have the full field, don't we? 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, all represented in the 200 metres individual medley final. So, there'll be a lot of calculations to do from this one. But there are three SM14s who are together to give you a little guide. Lanes four, three, and two, all in the same category. Jack Bridge in the SM10 is going to have to do it all by himself. Andrew Mullen in the SM5 is going to have to do it all by himself. And Michael Jones in the SM7 in zero is going to have to do it all by himself. But uh, it's going to be uh, Andrew Mullen at the back of the field, of course, but of course he does hold the British record at 317.45. And we'll be hoping you can get in and around that. But, uh, yep, plenty of uh, different categories and plenty of potential British records to be broken if they're in that kind of form. Certainly is. It is Ben Proctor that's leading out on that first butterfly leg, turning on to his back, really powering down now. It's 35 metres to go on this backstroke leg. He's opening a commanding lead every single stroke. So, at the 50 turn, Ben Proctor is leading the uh, posse of SM14, 28.80 from Scott Quinn and Joseph Schenk. They're pretty much together in the SM14. So, it's what Ben Proctor go here from Newquay, kind of Liam Tancock territory down there in the southwest. And Ben Proctor, I think, only knows one way to swim. He doesn't ever seem to hold back, whether it's uh, an individual stroke or whether it's four, like he's doing here. No, he certainly doesn't, and that's why he's so exciting to watch. And he is four metres up now, but James Christa is starting to close up on this breaststroke leg. Really is important to have a strong breaststroke leg on the IM. That's where you can make massive gains or you can certainly slip back. But the minute it is James Crisp trying to close down Ben Proctor, but the minute it probably doesn't look like he is. Yeah, I've got to say that Ben is uh, probably not quite as adept on the breaststroke, but nonetheless, when he gets onto the freestyle, he's going to go for it. Big style, and uh, say 218.74, Dan Pepper's British record. He got very close to another of his records yesterday, and so we know he's in pretty decent form, turning in 147.78. Jack Bridge in the SM10 category, 150.27, and uh, James Crisp in third, 150.5. So, but look at Ben Prop to go here. Really extending his lead out on that freestyle leg. He's got less than 20 metres to go. It's also lane six that's coming back strong. Jack Bridge out there from uh, Ben Proctor. Right, this is where we scan the board to see who has done what. Proctor, I think, easing in to the wall, 219.88, much quicker than he went in qualifying. Not a million miles outside that British record. 9.68 for him. Jack Bridge has stopped the clock with a 7.40 in terms of points. 8.65 for Scott Quinn, beaten by Joseph Schenk with 8.72. Still the SM7s and the SM5s to finish. So at the moment, Ben Proctor not too far outside that British record with 2.19.88. Andrew Mullen finishing in lane nine on the far side, but Michael Jones will be there first in lane at number zero. And he stops the clock at two. No, I haven't actually turned over yet that time. We haven't actually got a registered time for Andrew Mullen, for um, Michael Jones. We have 258.70. Here is Andrew Mullen finishing off in lane number nine. Last few meters for Andrew Mullen at the top of your screen. There he is, center screen. And 320.26 for Mullen's about three seconds outside his British record. So. Ben Proctor finished first, 
and gets the most marks too. 963 for him. Joseph Schenk in second. Scott Quinn in third and Sam Hyam with 788 points in fourth. This is confirmation of uh, what I've told you. You can see how your favorite swimmer did in the final of the 200 meters individual medley. 963 for Ben Proctor and uh, you see Andrew Mullen 600 at the bottom there. So all of them, pretty much all of those 10 swimmers. Ross will be in Montreal in a few weeks time. Yeah, it's great to see them now and get to see the improvement when they go to Montreal. We spoke a lot about them being in hard training and they're getting close to their personal best or the British record. If they're doing that now, we can expect big things when they go to Montreal. Right, so we have one more race to go, and it's going to contain only one swimmer. And it will be the 150 meters individual medley final, which will feature Lyndon Longhorn. I think it's probably a good time where we've got a little bit of a gap here, Ross, to talk about just how successful our Paralympians were last year and how consistently they're. I also see Lyndon Longhorn come on, and he's one of those who has progressed through the ranks in the. Uh, SM4 category. Yeah, I think, we, I think the start of it was Beijing. And, you know, the poster, poster girl of Paralympics women was, was Eleanor Simmons. And she brought with her a wave of talent and, and experience as well going into London. And, and we just absolutely flew in London. And hopefully we can continue that not only this year, but in three years' times in Rio. Right, so what we have to explain to you here is obviously with one swimmer in there, from Durham City, Lyndon Longhorn in the SM4. What he has to do is beat his British record. Your marks. British record at 3.02.36. Now, there's only three strokes. This is the 150 metres individual medley. So you'll only see three of the four strokes because of the disability. He holds the British record. But to get a medal, and I think this is really tough. It's, it's not your fault you're the only person in there. If there's nobody else, you know, that's the way it is. But the rules are, if you're the only person in a final, then what you have to do is beat your own British record. How tough is that? Especially when you're in heavy training and you're thinking about things in a few weeks' time. 3.02.36, he might go through all this and come up with nothing at the end. Yeah, but what he will come out with is a lot of race practice and something that he can fine-tune when he goes to the World Championship. His qualifying time from this morning was 3.02.42, and the PB in British record is 3.02.36. So he's only 6.100 seconds this morning away from his British record. So, you know, we do talk about he's in heavy training, but he's also on top form that he can get that close to his British record without resting down. As I recall, he had to do the same thing in Leeds when we did the coverage from there, didn't he? Poor old Lyndon, he was, he was there, as Andrew Mullins had to do here, because we don't have depth in this category, uh, so pretty much he's always racing himself until he gets to international and European competition. There is nobody to race him, so pretty much he's used to racing the clock. Yeah, and that's what he's got to do. It's a shame that he can't have anybody else to race, but um, as it is, there is nobody that he can race against, so he has got to race the clock and see if his time is good enough to break the British record so he can earn the gold medal. First split at 50 was 54.77. Here he is coming towards our camera. And of course, at the moment, with uh, the lack of facilities, there's a couple of places in the northeast. It's good that he gets the chance to train hard. And these boys and girls train very, very hard indeed. That's why they've got to the level they have. And there will be a lot of them bringing back medals from Montreal in about six weeks' time. So this is the two-third stage for Lyndon. You can hear the noise he makes as he comes off that, and he is really going for this. 209.84, and uh, that water is getting a feral thrashing. It goes about 55 seconds, this final leg of the freestyle. He will be under his British record, so we need to get behind Lyndon here so he can earn that gold medal but he needs to break that British record first of 3.02.36. 2.36 now, 2.37. It's going to be mighty tight. It's really hard for him to back up two big swims in a day. 
up to two minutes and 50 seconds now. He has only got 12 seconds to play with at 3.02.36 is in range but he's gonna have to get a move on now it's gonna be mighty mighty close he's done it he has done it <laughs> 301 95 516 points he has done it by about four tenths of a second in the end well done Lyndon he really at one stage I thought he's not gonna get there and he put in a massive burst over the last 10 to get that time, 516 points, and he will get a medal, and we may even get a smile from him in a moment. <laughs> Cracking swim. To do that on your own is, is just an unbelievable, and he's gone under the old British record by 0.4 of a second, so he's on form for the uh, World Championships later on in Montreal. Delightful stuff, and confirmation of the time and the points attributed to it 516 301 95 best he has ever been best we've ever seen in the 150 meters individual medley final in the sm4 category well done linden and i know that uh, andy sixsmith on pool deck knows linden quite well so she'll be an interesting little interview coming up in a few minutes so thank you for all your contributions by the way on the hashtag bgsc13 so uh, keep those coming uh, all through the evening and tomorrow as well because we want to hear from you for tomorrow night uh, day number four of five bgsc13 is the hashtag and uh, hopefully you'll be joining us for all the able-bodied and uh, the multi-classification events on saturday and sunday as well lyndon longhorn has just set a new british record in the 150 meters individual medley final 301 95 is time after a 302 42 this morning so let's hear from the man himself who had to do it all by himself in that event lyndon longhorn now is speaking to somebody he knows quite well here is with andy six smith Lyndon Longhorn, the British champion of the 150. I am absolutely superb, Lyndon, and apparently a British record too. How are you feeling about that? Well, I feel good for saying I've only had a few weeks in training, but I feel a lot better now. And I mean, it was better than this morning, so couldn't ask for better. <laughs> and what are the plans from here then, Lyndon? Well, hopefully train hard, a lot harder, and with Durham, Durham City as well. So see how it goes. We wish you the best of luck. I want the biggest cheer of the night for Lyndon Longhorn, champion of 150 IM. Well done, Lyndon. Fantastic. He's a happy chap down there on the side. I'd be really pleased with that swim. And he's one of those potentials coming through. He's not actually go, made the team go to Montreal in August, but he'll be definitely looking to go for Rio in four or three years' time. So lots of exciting competitions coming up for him. Now let's take a look back at the presentations we've already seen today. The 50 meters butterfly there. We've seen this lad an awful lot this week. Ben Proud receiving another medal on top of the podium. We have spoke a lot about him, but he deserves it, doesn't he? Doesn't he, Ross? He's, uh, you know, he's one of the biggest talents in Britain at the minute, smashing the British record on the butterfly. He's got the 100 meters freestyle to come later on in the week, so it'll be very exciting to see what it is. Uh, <coughs> Stacey's tied a surprise 50 year breaststroke winner. Normally here on the 200 metres and the 100 metres, but... Still to come. We'll find out if she does the qualification time later on this week. And then finally, we had the 50 metres backstroke. Again, another shock, not seeing Liam Tankle up there. But Marco, big smile on his face, receiving that medal. A new Welsh record for Marco as well. So he must be over the moon that he can actually beat away one of the most legends in British for me, isn't it, Liam Tancock? He's, he's really been a fighting force for many years now, along with the days when you were swimming, really. Yeah, you know, I used to train with uh, Liam for many years, and you know, he's, we spoke about it a lot in the commentary. He's, the world ch he's currently the, the world champion. Um, he won the, the title in 2009, he won 2011, and he's, he's wanting to, hoping to get on that team so he can regain that title in 2013. And there are medal ceremonies going on right now, and there's Jessica Jane Applegate taking the gold in the women's multi-classification multi 200 metres individual medley. Ellie Simmons not on the top spot, but that was actually quite a positive swim for Ellie because her 400 metre time was about 20 seconds off her personal best, but her individual medley was getting a lot closer to being on world record pace. Yeah, I've seen a lot of the disability athletes. They're in heavy training, and it's you know it's so hard to swim fast when you're in heavy training. They're gearing towards Montreal later on in the year, so to be swimming these kind of times now is very exciting. 
Well, we'll come to the, a few more of the presentations a little bit later on. But let's. what's been the stand-up performance for you so far tonight, Ross? You can't look too far away from Jazz Carlin. Uh, that was an incredible swim on that 1500, smashing the British, uh, completely smashing the British record, getting close to the European record. Um, a fantastic swim, especially after that 800 metres freestyle last night, where she did an incredible swim. So she's on form. She's one of our big medal hopes going towards uh, Barcelona now. Um, also, Marco did a fantastic, as we just mentioned, to, to beat Liam Tancock on the 50 breaststroke. Rob is swimming fantastically well. We saw him on the 200 metres freestyle tonight and the 400 uh, a couple of nights ago. He's got the 100 metres to come. So, you know, as we're standing here now, British swimming's in a good, good state of good state. It really is, Ross. And then we have the medals there. And that was quite a surprise silver medal there for um, Joseph Schenk. He's a, he's a newbie on the scene. And actually, he's a training partner to the gold medal winner, Ben Proctor. They both train down in Newquay, so they've travelled a long way to get here. Do you think that kind of distance has an impact on their performance here? It certainly will do, but they would have made up for it. They'd have come a day earlier or something like that, because it's a long drive down from up to Sheffield from Newquay, but certainly didn't hinder his performance. Ben Proctor, he smashed it tonight, and he, he led from the first whistle, first, first gun all the way to the last stroke, so he's having a fantastic competition. Well, we've had lots of action tonight, and we're trying to keep on top for your tweets, and we've actually had a couple come through from one in particular, um, Swim Coast. There's been a lot of Swim Coast action going on. I'm not entirely sure who those guys are, but they've been really supporting them. And M. Campbell has said he's got all the lads round supporting Swim Coast and they're watching the stream, so that's great to see. Now, um, if we look at the breaststroke, there was a lot of drama around the 200 metres breaststroke, wasn't there, Ross? And it, did it live up to expectations, that race? I'm, I'm more. I'm more, to be honest with you. We, 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 I'm in an hour in whether um, Andrew Willis was going to compete in this event tonight. He got reinstated around about 10 o'clock this morning and he, he really did lead that 200 metres breaststroke, but the quality of Michael Jameson shone through in the last 25 metres, and he overtook Andrew Willis to, to produce a smashing time, 2.07, only three tenths slower than what he did in London um, a year ago. So those, those guys are in, in big, in, on great form, and hopefully they can continue that now for the next four weeks going into Barcelona. And we've been speaking about the breaststroke, and we actually have our guest with us now. We have Dan Slowinski, who is a breaststroker himself. And um, 50 minutes breaststroke was your was your particular race this week, and you smashed it this week. Well done, Dan. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, it was a total surprise. I mean, with the, I mean, the, the comeback that I've had. I've been out 14 months. I got back in in May. Uh, got back up to four sessions, but I had a major back spasm as a result of my body not being used to such hard work for so long. I was out for three weeks trying to, you know, nurse that. Uh, got back in, managed to get my qualifying time at the, uh, the Glasgow meet. Uh, no, the Edinburgh meet, sorry, the Grand Prix meet. Um, and then swam the heats and was like, you know, that's pretty comfortable. It's quite a considerable amount of strokes less. And the semi, I was like, well, I had to literally re re reset my mindset because I was like, that was, you know, so comfortable for what it felt like. So we've seen you on the 50 metres uh, breaststroke this, this week and smashing the British record. Where can you see yourself moving on forward now? Obviously, you've got the World Championships hopefully coming up in a couple of weeks, but looking at further afield in the next three years, what's your progression going to be like? I mean, it's, well, it's, it's got to be pretty much record-breaking in a way, hasn't it? If you want to get, I've got to play catch-up, and then if I want to be at the top, I've got to overtake as well. Um, so it's just, you know, it's total hard work, head down, you know, I need to be injury free, which is what I'm doing at the moment now. I'm not over, you know, overloading my body. We're doing a lot of like getting my body back, you know, in a line, so to speak. You know, there's a few jokes from the boys coming from that angle. Um, and yeah, I've just, you know, I've just got to nail it really. Uh, I know I can do it. It's not a case of mental belief. It's just physically getting everything tuned right. And come Wales next year, you've moved to Scotland now. You're in Stirling, being coached um, up there. It's almost going to be like a home competition for you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if, you know, if they didn't have the athletes village, really, I could probably stay at my, uh, <laughs> my, you know, my house and drive to and from. But yeah, it's, you know, it's good. I mean, I absolutely love it up there. The ITC and Rob and the squad just runs like absolute clockwork, and you know, it's, it's a dream for me. Uh, you know, to me, I'm hoping it's a dream that marks the beginning of my career. Um, yeah, I've been 59, and I've, you know, swam some good times, qualified for the Olympics and whatnot, but. You know, I really need to move on from that, and I know I can. It's just a case of putting all the right pieces in the puzzle. And what are you going to do for the next four weeks to ensure that you're going to get to Barcelona in the best possible shape of your life? Well, I mean, I, well, I, you know, once I'm confirmed that I'm on the team, that'll be nice. 
Um, but yeah, it's just I'm not really going to change what I'm doing really because I'm not doing an awful lot. I'm probably doing about fifteen thousand in the pool a week, which is you know a considerable, you know, less amount to, to most people. Um, but I want to keep going on with you know what's my priority at the moment, which is staying fit, injury free, uh, and just take it as a bit of experience. You know, get up and show the you know the big guns like Vanderberg and Sprenger that you know maybe one day I'll be tapping on the shoulder and saying boo. We've talked a lot about the Commonwealth already. Are you going to be targeting the 50 or the 100 next year at the Commonwealth Games? 100, 50. I mean, there's even a, there's a spot in the 200 as well going. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. I'm just going to go for it in one go, really, and just see what happens. I just want to get fit. Once I'm fit, I don't, it's, I don't, I don't have any doubts over it. Well, I cannot wait to see a fit Dan Zielinski. Thank you very much for <laughs> joining us and best of luck for the next few weeks yeah, if you, you're on the plane to Barcelona. Cheers. And we were talking a bit about Barcelona and it'd be interesting to know where we are standing in comparison to the rest of the world and we have the Americans on their trials at the moment. Um, Ross, where do you think, how do you think we are comparing in comparison to the rest of the world? I mean, Jazz Carling, we're seeing these world leading times. That's surely got to be a great indicator. Yeah, normally we're setting these world leading times in March and the rest of the world probably haven't even woken up yet and done their qualification meets. But now we're actually seeing these world leading marks. The rest of the world have had their trials, apart from America, who are doing them ex exactly the same time. But we're still coming out on top. So I think the, w the way we've they've gone about the business since London, you know, we've gone on, everyone's spoke about London in the past. That's been parked and moved on. Now we're building for a new future. We've got a new leadership going on to Rio, and I think it's looking absolutely fantastic. Should we be worried that Britain are usually pretty good off the back of a major games to, um, to, to step up their game and then don't always carry it on for the four years? I, th I think momentum's a massive thing and if you can build that momentum, everyone's confidence was shot last year. So this competition now and certainly the World Championships is about building confidence, it's about building belief that we can do it. We've lost one of our, the golden girls of British swimming in Rebecca Adlington. You know, you can almost guarantee that she'll win two medals. So we've lost that, we need to replace her. And I think Jazz has done, gone a long way about you know, stepping into her shoes, having that belief that she can take on the rest of the world. So, you know, I, I, I believe we're in, we're in good, good hands. We've got a lot of development to go, but you know, the likes of Ben Proud coming through, you know, James Guy, Rob is still swimming extremely well. You know, there's a whole host of youngsters that are, are knocking on the door of the older guys, and it's just fantastic to see. Well, I've been keeping a track on the people that have qualified this week, and I think our number is up to 20 now. That obviously is subject to confirmation that they, they are put through the selection policy and the panel do accept them on to the team. But that includes the likes of Michael Jameson, Andrew Willis, Jessica Thielman, Marco Lochran and Liam Tancock are on that list. So it's up to 20. They've got 10 more spaces to fill, and it's the penultimate day tomorrow. It's day four. The heat is really getting to us now, and you can see that they're stepping up their performances. And I can't wait to see what it's going to be like, to who's going to make the finals. And it's going to be a great day of action. So come back and join us at 5.30 tomorrow evening, and we will bring you all the action from day four. Good night.